Welcome back to Investing with Confidence. I am your host, Joshua David, talking about the do's and the don'ts of the financial markets. Huge volatility this past week. We had great moves up. We also had some nice moves down, great opportunities in both directions. We're going to continue that discussion about opportunities in up and down markets coming up here, especially in the stock mm-hmm. market. If you happen to miss that workshop that I gave away some uh, tickets to right here on Bloomington, we have one on Wednesday the 13th. And Saturday the 16th, call 952-814-4410. When you come into this workshop, you're going to get some hands-on. Our proprietary platform It's called Click. And, you know, potentially doing some of the things that we're talking about here on, on the show about some, you know, everybody's always visual learners, uh, hands-on learners. We're going to get, give everybody this next couple of days here, the Wednesday and the, and, the, and the 13th and Saturday the 16th, an opportunity to do something like that. You can also text the word invest to the number 484848. We're going to send you a link to uh, register for one of those two dates. When you do that, we're going to give away fi- uh, a financial quick start kit that'll help you get started right away. Now, Al, there's one thing uh, that we want to get into here in the second segment here about is some different comparisons because there's a lot of great opportunities mm-hmm. in all the markets, in, in stocks, options, futures, and Forex. But do you have a couple... I guess some stocks that you've been looking at and some potential setups that uh, that we've seen, uh, what we might see moving forward, and some different reasons on why to use stocks or why to use options right. and certain yeah. ways you can do that. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, there's really two components to everybody's financial life. You know, there's the short-term goals that you have, short-term income goals, and then there's the long-term wealth, the long-term retirement part of your life. And the problem that that we see in the industry is that, most people are put into only a long-term one-way strategy based on primarily mutual funds. Yeah. You know, so if you look at the return of mutual funds, you know, average return over 10, 20 years, you're looking at maybe three, four, five percent somewhere in that range. Yeah. And it, what we want people to understand is that there are ways of, of using the stock market for long-term wealth that, far exceed the potential benefits that you can get with mutual funds. Just as as an example, most people have heard of Amazon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Amazon's trading at over $3,000 a share right now. You go back to December of 2018, it was just a little over $1,000 a share. You know, that's a a triple in that two-year time period. Apple back on uh, December 18th, uh, December of 2018, I should say, was trading at $35. Now it's around $145. Uh, Tesla, m- uh, most people are familiar with Tesla. Mm-hmm. June of 2019, that was $35 a share. Right now, it's $786. The, yep. the reason I'm mentioning these is that just to show you the potential that is out there compared to what most people are put into, which are mutual funds, which are going to give you mediocre returns. So th- stocks are the best single asset for your long-term wealth, but there are ways of approaching the stock market that will give you the potential for much greater benefit than what you're probably in now. Now, what about the short-term income? If you're looking for something short-term, then holding on to an equity or stock for uh, years may not give you what you need. If you have income needs, cash needs now, then you need to to be able to use something that gives you a short-term return. The futures market, the foreign exchange market, those are two great short-term assets. Actually, Forex can be used also for long-term wealth buildup, mm-hmm. but options is another one. And, and more and more, we're finding that people that come into our classes want to learn about options because they can be used short-term. They can be used mid-term, and they can also be used when you're looking at your long-term wealth portfolio, the stock portfolio. You can use options, number one, to protect those assets, and number two, to actually increase the returns that you get. Uh, do you but, have any examples on anything yeah, you're talking about? Let's talk about short term, for example. Uh, a lot of people think, well, I, I can't participate in Amazon because at $3,000 a share, it's a, actually 100 shares. If you have a full position of Amazon, a 100 share position would cost you $326,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, on October 7th, uh, Amazon was up $55 a share. We often see that stock move mostly double digits, sometimes as much as 80, close to $100 a a day, it can have a move like that. So short-term option traders have an opportunity to benefit with much less upfront uh, investment. For example, I mentioned uh, Amazon was up on the 7th of October, $55 a share. It was 1.69% increase 
on a $326,000 position. You could control 100 shares, an an investor could control 100 shares of Amazon uh, for under $20 on that day and have a 139% return. So that's the kind of difference between a just owning a stock and looking at it from a short-term standpoint compared to options. NVIDIA, another great company that has good moves. And when you're looking at short-term income, then uh, ideally you would look for a stock that has big moves, big up moves, big down moves, so you can take advantage of those on a short-term basis. Uh, NVIDIA on uh, October 5th, it went from $199 to $211. That's $12, that's a 6% increase. An option position could have been put on for to control that hundred shares that would have been up over a hundred percent. So that those are the kind of differences we see. Uh, you are able to have a smaller account, and a lot of people just don't have enough money to have large positions of these stocks. Yeah. And if you want to do something that's a little bit less, TJ Maxx, for example, a very good company. Uh, if you have a hundred shares, that's going to cost you two hundred ninety-five dollars. Um, and or no, I'm sorry, six hundred and fifty nine dollars. An option could be purchased for as little as two hundred and ninety five dollars. That would be the maximum risk that you have also. But the potential return is probably going to be about 10 times the return on the stock. Yeah. So the big difference that Ella's talking about is is the returns based on the capital that you're using. So some of these high flying stocks, everybody knows about Amazon, Tesla, Uh, NVIDIA, everybody knows about these, but most people can't really invest in them, especially because most people long-term invest. They can't buy the stock because it requires a lot of capital, um, a lot more than most people have. If you have, you know, a few million bucks, you can pretty much do what you want with these stocks. Most people don't have that, so you have to be creative and use the right asset. Al's talking a lot about options here, which gives you the opportunity to use leverage or buying power. And the potential returns are different based on the capital that you use. So if you think about it, if you're using a less amount of capital up front, basically kind of like a, like an escrow account, you put mm-hmm. capital in an escrow right. account to to purchase a home, right? Well, it's kind of like that in the markets. It's, it's capital that they're just using or tying up and using that for whatever position that you want to get into. And now you talk about that in these workshops that you teach here in Bloomington and kind of show them what that looks like on the platform click. Show them what how how the leverage works, different ways that you might be able to get in an option, say in a Tesla or an Amazon at a much lower cost basis. And that's just the reality of what's available in the financial markets. And, you know, people that want to see that stuff, you got to come to one of these workshops that Al does here. I want to give away some uh, passes. We got a few seats in there um, here in Bloomington for Wednesday the 13th and Saturday the 16th to see how to use options to purchase these high flying stocks at a lower cost basis. But, uh, and actually click the buttons. We talked about it this earlier. People want to have the opportunity to be, to see things and actually click the buttons, use it, uh, hands-on learning. Everybody likes that. We do that right here on Bloomington. Wednesday the 16th, or sorry, Wednesday the 13th and Saturday the 16th. They're both in the morning. It's about two hours to learn more about these different techniques and strategies. And these institutions are doing this stuff. These are also available to us, the public or the retail trader. So call 952-814-4410 for this workshop here in Bloomington. 952-814-4410 952-814-4410 or text the word invest to the number 484848. You're going to get a link back, pick a date, which is the 13th or the 16th for this workshop. When you do that, we're going to give you a financial quick start kit to help you get started right away. So Al, you talked a little bit about options on kind of how to get into these with a lower amount of capital, right. basically being more capital efficient. Do you have any other stocks that you've been looking at or any potential areas of interest that uh, investors might be looking at? Well, you know, here's one thing for a lot of people that are unfamiliar with the markets. Uh, you don't have to necessarily pick a stock. You know, the the, the institutions are going to be showing us what they're trading. But especially when you're starting out, uh, one of the things that you might want to consider are just using exchange-traded funds, yeah. ETFs. Okay. That's a great way to participate in the market with, a, a again, a small upfront investment that controls a number of different stocks. The S&P 500, for example, the, the spider SPY is the symbol for the ETF. That, that You would actually own 
parts of 500 different companies there. One of the great benefits of exchange-traded funds, Josh, is is the cost of, of owning it. If you buy a mutual fund that controls or mimics the S&P 500, you're probably going to end up paying somewhere around 2 or 3% in, in fees for that. With the uh, the ETFs, we're looking at, at three hundredths of a percent. That's the expense ratio for the uh, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. There's the ETFs, exchange-traded funds, that mimic virtually anything you can think of. There's thousands of them. So if you want to participate in the major indexes like the Dow or the NASDAQ or the, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, there are ETFs that do that. Gold, silver, uh, energy, financials, technologies. And, and it, if you let's say that you have an exchange-traded fund and one of the companies in that fund goes bankrupt, well, it doesn't have that big, that big an impact because there are numerous, maybe hundreds of other companies that are part of that fund. If you own one stock, you happen to pick a stock like Enron, for example, yeah. and uh, Enron is no longer around, nor would be the value of the stocks that you owned in Enron. So you, you, you're minimizing that potential risk, and you're, you're actually participating in something that still has good moves, but in also really... Uh, addresses any segment of the economy you can think of. There's an ETF that, that would represent anything. Yeah. Uh, and, Energy. Yeah, and you can trade it like a stock. You can mm-hmm. get in and out of it during the day, which you can't in a mutual fund. You can have stop losses on an exchange-traded fund. So if you're wrong, your any risk that you have is minimized. Uh, you can do options on exchange-traded funds. So f- especially for people that are starting out, this is a great way to do it. And by the way, just a, another comment on Click. Click is probably the most innovative soft, or innovative technology product out there. I mean, the, we have worked for years putting this together. It's won numerous international technological or technology uh, uh, awards, and it's it's extremely valuable and helpful in reducing the you know, kind of the complexity of doing trading. Yeah. So I think people that come in to see it are going to really be impressed with uh, with how simplified their trading can be using a platform like that, which also, by the way, will tell you if it's a trade that you shouldn't be making. It actually comes up with an alert telling you that. Yeah, and you were talking about the SPY here, the S&P 500 ETF, and it's it's actually coming. It's in an interesting area right now, Al, because, you know, right now it's roughly, you know, it's between the... 14 or 4, 450 and 420 areas right now, right? Right. Yes. So, and there's a potential dem- or a, a supply zone where basically sellers could be sitting there in the market, you know, right around that 445 area. There's a zone there that uh, mm-hmm. it kind of looks like it. So, that's, you know, investors, you know, you got to be aware of what's happening in these markets, but there's an, also an area of demand that has a potential to. You know, as as prices go down to potentially move the market back up, we don't know what's going to happen. But if you have these areas of interest, we call them supply and demand zones, right. how to enter these with low risk, high reward, high probability, high probability entry points. Right. And it's that is actually at or near a turn in price. I mean, this demand zone, there's a potential that it'll have a t- tough time getting through the 395 area right around there. Yeah. And the reason for that is as long as there are buyers in a certain area, enough buyers... Price isn't going to go below that. It really can't yep. until all those buyers are out of the market. Yeah. So the S and P five hundred is in a very interesting area that we want to keep an eye on here. The next, oh, I'd say the next few days because the market's moving so fast right, right now. Yeah. And and the, you know, the bottom line is really price just basically moves from demand zone to supply zone and then back. It, th- so that's why it's so important to be able to identify with a high degree of accuracy where those zones are. That's what our core strategy does, and that's actually what Click will help you do too. Yeah, so I want to invite some people to a workshop that we have coming up here on Wednesday the 13th and Saturday the 16th on how well, how to actually you know act and do some of this stuff in uh, hands-on in this workshop. You're going to be able to use Click uh, right here on Bloomington, so call 952-814-4410 for this investing class or this uh, workshop, I should say. Wednesday the 13th and Saturday the 16th, 952-814-4410. You can also text the word INVEST to the number 484848. When you do that, we're going to call you right away, but if you get a chance to click the link, pick a date for this class, you'll get a financial quick start kit just for registering for this invest or this workshop. Coming up next, we're going to continue this discussion about some of the different stocks. We're talking about areas of buyers and sellers 
and more of that. 952-814-4410. We'll be right back.